Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, a consultant spinal neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT. And in this video, we're going to talk about Corda Equina syndrome. In order to understand it, let's quickly go through the anatomy. So the human spine is made up of a stack of bones called vertebrae uh, that we see here. This stack that starts in the cervical spine at the top, seven bones, 12 bones in the thoracic spine, the chest area of the spine, and then five bones in the lumbar spine, the sort of lower back area of the spine, and then in the sacrum there's another five bones, then you have the tailbone, um, the coccyx. So each bone is, each vertebrae is a vertebral body, a cylindrical block of bone with a kind of arch of bone attached to the back. So if we look at a cross section of it, this is the back, this is the front. Um, here we're seeing the disc between the bones, uh, but essentially there's a block of bone here with this arch on the back and then these bony appendages um, where ligaments and muscles attach to. And this creates a canal in the middle, a kind of tunnel through which the spinal cord runs in the neck and thoracic area of the spine and then lower down the spine uh, in the lumbar area where the spinal cord comes to a, a finish you've got all the nerves that are hanging down and that's what's called that is the corda equina so let's look at an mri of a standard normal spine so this is called a sagittal view of an mri scan so this is a slice right down the middle of the body and we're looking in from the left here is the skin at the back of the spine uh, this is the front so these are the vertebral bodies of the spine and in between you've got these cushions called discs um, these are the arches at the back of the spine, creating this white area in the middle called the spinal canal, that tunnel in the middle of the spine, which contains and protects the spinal cord, which terminates about here. And then you have a bundle of nerves hanging down from this point onwards. This is just all nerves hanging down. And that's what the cord equina is. It's Latin for horse's tail because it has a similar appearance. So cord equina syndrome um, is what happens when all of these nerves, all of the nerves in the middle of the canal below the spinal cord get compressed and stop functioning. Um, and that could be a result of a disc prolapsing, one of these discs prolapsing out, compressing them, or other pathologies causing compressions such as tumors, fractures, very rarely stenosis, or sometimes hemorrhages or even infections. I have a video link on the herniated disc down below, but normally when we talk about herniated discs and sciatica, if we look at this cross section here, this being the back, this being the front, a bit of the disc material in the middle leaks out and pinch, it usually leaks out slightly towards the side, pinching one of the nerves, um, causing leg pain. But in called equina syndrome, it leaks out centrally and it's usually a big prolapse that encompasses or takes up the whole of this cross-sectional area compressing all of the nerves running down the spine. So this is what it looks like on an MRI scan. Again, the back of the spine, the front of the spine, these are the vertebral bodies. Uh, this is the canal in the middle of the spine. The spinal cord is here and these are the nerves hanging down, the cord equina we call it. And here is a big disc prolapse here, taking out all of these nerves, compressing them completely. And this is a medical emergency because those are the nerves um, that control our legs, um, also the sphincters of our bladder and bowel. So control of uh, urinary function and also opening our bowels. So cord equina syndrome, a syndrome is defined by clinical signs and symptoms. Um, so it's usually pain, like sciatica, but going down both legs, uh, saddle numbness, so numbness around the anal region or the genitals, and um, urinary retention to start with, which then, which means you know your bladder's filling up, but you can't actually feel it, or when you try and open your bladder, it doesn't fully empty, but it might feel like it's empty, and when they scan the bladder, there's still urine there, and then at, at its end stage. Um, you start to get overflowing content, just complete loss of control of the bladder and even um, the bowels. So it's an emergency. We don't want it to get to that stage because we want to try and preserve as much function as possible and prevent you becoming um, incontinent or even losing power uh, or control of your legs. So therefore, at the point of pain in both legs, um, sciatica type pain, but going down both legs, we're already suspicious because for both legs to be effective, the disc has to be that big and that wide to compress those nerves and therefore you start to worry about the central nerves going down to your sphincters. Um, 
becoming infected later on. So from the point of having pain down both legs alone, that's when alarm bells start to ring and we would want you assessed and scanned um, fairly urgently. Um, if you have pain down one leg only, that's usually just sciatica as we explained in another video and in the earlier slide here. But um, if there's pain down one leg, but you still, but you also have some numbness or loss of urinary function. Again, there's a little bit of a concern that the disc is big enough. It may have wiped out one of the nerves that goes down the legs, as well as some of the sacral nerves that go to control your sphincters, but maybe not um, the opposite leg. Uh, but that's still an emergency and we'd still want you scanned early. So any of these symptoms, so pain down the legs, down both legs, or if you've got urinary incontinence retention or numbness down below specifically in the saddle area um, around the anus um, or around the genitals that's an emergency we, you need to get urgent medical attention and be scanned as soon as possible but as this is a medical emergency the treatment is surgery um, carried out urgently um, and often this is carried out through a couple of different procedures. One is a laminectomy and discectomy. There's a video of uh, a laminectomy below uh, in the links um, where if we look at the, this is the back of the spine, the front for a cross section, uh, back front, where you take off the whole of the lamina, this arch of this upside down Y that we see here, the arch at the back of the spine, you remove it all together. It's not shown on this picture, it shows the disc here to the side, but in a in called equinus syndrome, as mentioned, this disc just engulfs the whole of the canal. So you take off the lamina, try and get the nerves out of the way and protect them, and then remove that whole loose um, disc fragment altogether. Now, sometimes, depending on the discretion of the surgeon and the appearance of the disc on the scan, this can be done through a uh, microdiscectomy approach, which is slightly less invasive, where this time we come in again through the back of the spine, but instead of removing the whole arch, like a laminectomy, you make a window at the back of the spine, move the nerves to one side, and then try and get all of the disc uh, fragment out. It's a bit less invasive. Again, the goal of this operation is to preserve the function of your nerves or try and regain some of that function cosmesis uh, the cosmetic result is not the priority here we want you to have a functioning bladder by the end of it um, uh, and, and good neurological function in your legs so whether this approach is done or the laminectomy is down to the discretion of the surgeon doing it and which one they feel is most appropriate based on your scan findings so to summarize if you have back pain that radiates down both legs um, it's associated with saddle numbness or any difficulty passing urine that's a medical emergency if you have pain going down one leg only but also happen to have numbness down below in your genitals um, again get that checked out asap because that's a medical emergency and may require surgery urgently if you found this video helpful please don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel and also please visit us at spinemdt.com to see how we can help you you can look at our three-step process and a variety of uh, consultation we can offer either with a practitioner such as a chiropractor osteopath or physiotherapist um, or with a surgeon based on a free assessment that you can take um, and we'll be very happy to help you thank you Thank you.